Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I am so glad to have you here today. We're going to be creating 10 easy to do farmhouse tier tray and riser DIYs. Some of these projects you may have previously seen on my channel and some are absolutely brand new and I can't wait to share them with you. So let's go ahead and get started on our first project. Using this pie pan from Dollar Tree, go ahead and remove the sticker and then the little glue dot that's holding that on. And I wanted to give this a nice galvanized look. So I'm going to use some of my gray Deco Art chalky finish paint and some of the Waverly White chalk paint. So I'm using a clean, soft, bristled brush and just dabbing all over these this entire pie pan. You want to leave a little bit of the shininess from the metal showing through but not too much um, just enough to kind of give it that galvanized look after that dries I can flip it over and repeat this entire process on the inside of the pie pan and I made sure that I went around the outside rim as well after the gray dries I'm going to come back in with the white chalk paint and do the exact same thing and don't worry about messing it up because if you put too much of one color you can always go back after it dries and add a little bit of the other color. This just gave it a nice galvanized look. Now I, you could add like some burnt umber or a little bit of black chalk paint to give it a little bit more of a rusted look but I just wanted more of the galvanized look not so much the rusted um, look for that. Using this candle holder, this came from Target in their dollar spot. The tag says $3.99, but I'm pretty sure I did not pay $3.99 for that. I've had it for quite a while, so I honestly cannot remember how long I've had it. I mean, I can't remember how much I paid for it. I am using some E6000 and a few little scrap pieces of painter's stick to be able to glue this down because I wanted to have a nice leveled edge across the top to be able to add this to the pie pan so that it would sit, it would have a nice place for all the glue to sit on when we attach it so it'll be good and stable. Using this magnetic plastic holder from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna remove the lid and set that to the side because I don't need to use that for this DIY. I'm gonna use that E6000 and apply the bottom part of this candle holder to the bottom part of that plastic container right there on the center of that magnetic piece and let that E6000 set up. After all of the E6000 has dried, I'm gonna go over this entire piece except for the top because we're not gonna see that once we attach it to our pie pan with my Waverly White chalk paint and this does take two coats to get some nice good coverage on that and I just love the shape of this and how it turned out with that plastic piece at the bottom. Once again I'm going to distress my piece with some of that gray chalk paint but if you don't like the distressing you can just skip this part and go to the next part which is attaching the pie pan to the top of the candle holder. Again I'm going to use the E6000 around the entire rim and then a lot of the portions of the wood and in the opposite places of the E6000 I'm going to add some hot glue just to hold it temporarily until that E6000 sets up. I place that in the center of the bottom of the pie pan and again I like to use um, a measuring tool just to make sure that I get it centered. I love how this candle holder turned out. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. It looks like a nice high-end piece. Two of these wood round plaques from Walmart and I think they were about a dollar a piece and I'm also going to be using some beads. I get my beads in this very large bag from Amazon which I will have linked in my Amazon store in my um, description box below if you are interested. I'm going to take my hot glue and do one small section at a time. Now these wood plaques have a lip on them so I'm going right there to the outside edge of that lip and then I'm going to place each of my beads with the holes facing up so you don't see any of those and I'm going to go all the way around in small sections so that my hot glue doesn't dry before I can add my beads on. Then I'm going to take that other wood round 
and put the glue right there at the lip all the way around this and then I can set this right on top of those beads. And you guys, this thing is so beautiful. I am loving how it's looking already. I'm gonna take one of Dollar Tree's candlesticks, glass candlesticks, and I'm gonna give it a base coat of my Waverly White chalk paint, and I'm only gonna put one coat on there and let it dry because I'm gonna go back in after that dries with my antique wax. And I'm gonna give this one good coat. I'm not gonna wipe it off. I'm just trying to make it look like wood. And then I'm gonna set that to the side and let it dry. And I'm gonna put the same antique wax right on these um, wood rounds. Now to get down in those beads, I just found that it was easier to pounce the brush up and down to make sure you get inside all of those crevices and cracks. And then I am gonna go back in with a cloth or you can go in with a paper towel and just smear that in and blend it in really nicely and it's going to give it that nice antique look. So I did this to the entire piece. Now you want to make sure when you add your beads you don't put a lot of extra glue on there because the wax will not stick to the glue and you really don't want to be able to see that extra glue. This is how it looks. I'm gonna make sure they are dry before I attach the two pieces together. To attach them, I am gonna use some E6000 and some hot glue. And I'm gonna put four dots of E6000 opposite of each other because I do not like to mix my E6000 and hot glue together. For some reason, it just doesn't work well if you mix the two together. So that E6000 is gonna give you that permanent long-term hold and the hot glue is going to give you that temporary hold. I'm going to place the top part of the candlestick to the bottom part of the wood and now we have this gorgeous riser. It's turned out so gorgeous. I love this piece. It looks like a real antique wood piece. Let me know what you think of project number two. Using project number two, I created this about a year ago, so I thought, wonder what it would look like if I distress it with white chalk paint. So I'm gonna take a dry brush, dab that into my paint, and wipe the tips of the brush off, and just go over this entire piece, very heavily distressing it with the white chalk paint, making sure I leave like some streaks and some of that brown stain showing through. And this is how it turned out. You guys will have to let me know if you like it as project number two or project number three with the white distressed look. Either way, I think it's beautiful. You guys let me know. These hexagon signs, they are fairly thick and pretty sturdy. I cannot remove the stickers from the bottom, so I took sandpaper and sanded it down as smooth as I could, and then used my desktop mini cordless vacuum to get all that debris up. I love this thing. It comes in so handy. I have that as well as these beads listed in my Amazon store, which is in my description box below if you are interested in getting any of those. I'm using six of the wood beads and Folk Arts White Adirondack Chalk Paint. I'm gonna give the bottom of this sign two coats, and then I'm going to go over each one of those wood beads with a light coat. I still want some of that natural wood color to show through. And I'll give you a close up so it just has just a hint of the wood color. I'm not trying to get full coverage on that. I'll paint all six of those. And after all the paint dries, I'm gonna take Gorilla Glue and apply that to each one of the beads and then apply each bead to each corner of this hexagon sign. Now, I set something heavy like a Lazy Susan on top of mine with a candle until that glue set up. Once that glue sets up, I can then flip it over and paint the top. So now the glue has dried. It is turning out to be so pretty. Now it took about three coats to cover up this design on the top of the sign. And this is how it looks after the third coat. I am loving how this is turning out. I'm gonna set this to the side and work on my second one. I've already painted the sign just like I did previously with about three coats of paint on the top and two on the bottom. 
And for the base, I'm using one of Dollar Tree's candle holders. Now, because they are a different white, I want my base to match the top. So I'm gonna give this candle holder two coats of the white chalk paint and allow that to dry. Now I can attach the two together using that same Gorilla Glue around the top rim of the candle holder. And I'm also gonna use some hot glue in between those for that temporary hold until that Gorilla Glue sets up. So once I have that in place, I can then flip this over and center it onto the bottom of that hexagon sign. And then I flipped it over after that hot glue set and then put a nice heavy candle on top of it until the Gorilla Glue set. Now you can style it however you want. I thought this turned out to be a very unique, beautiful riser. Most risers that you see are rectangular or round. And I thought a hexagon riser would just be super cute. Let me know what you think. To take one of these wood rounds from Dollar Tree that was in their Dollar Tree Plus section for five dollars. You guys, I was so excited to find a Dollar Tree that had a plus section in it. I'm going to use four of those same size wood beads and I'm going to apply these to the bottom of the wood round using Gorilla Wood Glue and some hot glue. And I'm just going to place four on there one opposite of each other to create feet. Once all of that has dried, you wanna make sure that you remove any glue strands. And I took some sandpaper to go over that to smooth it down because some of these outside edges are a little rough so that I can take my Waverly Antique Wax and go over this piece. And I just like to apply it with a brush and then I will take a wet baby wipe and just smear that in and smear that stain all around and give it a beautiful, nice finish. And it really brings out that wood grain, which is really gorgeous on these pieces that you can pick up at the Dollar Tree Plus section. I'm going to go over this entire piece, including the feet that dry completely. Then you can decorate it however you wish. I love how this piece turned out. It was so easy to make, yet it looks so high-end. So for our next project, we're actually going to take this piece, since I've made it a while back, we're gonna add another piece to it. So I'm gonna pop those feet off and then use my putty knife to scrape that glue off of each where the feet were and take some sandpaper, sand that down nice and smooth. And then I will take the antique wax to touch up those areas. Allow that to thoroughly dry and we're gonna use the previous hexagon riser project. I thought these would be really beautiful together. So you know me, I'm going to get that tape measure out. I'm going to make sure I've got it completely centered all the way around. Then I'll take my pencil, make a mark so I'll know exactly where to place it back once I add my glue. So I'm going to glue this using E6000 since the wood's already painted. We can't use like a wood glue because it's not raw wood. So I'm using E6000 for that permanent hold and then I'll add a couple dots of hot glue just to hold it in place so that I am able to flip it over so that I could set something with a little bit of weight on there to allow that E6000 to set up. I love how these two combined turned out. It looks like a true high-end gorgeous piece. If you guys are enjoying today's projects and you haven't done so already, I would love for you to become a part of our Country Lily community by clicking on that subscribe button and also visiting me on all my other social media accounts. All those links are in my description box below. For this project, we're using three of Dollar Tree's wood trays. These kind of slant out on the outside edges. Now my handles do not match, but that's okay. If you are lucky enough to have all three matching handles, that'd be great, but I still think it turns out pretty. I went over all of these with some sandpaper to smooth them down and then gave each of the trays two coats of white chalk paint, except for the outside edges, I left those raw wood, the two end pieces. We're also using four of these 12 inch ruler sticks. You can get these in a pack of 10 at Lowe's. They used to be a dollar. They might be a little bit more than a dollar now. We're gonna paint two coats of white chalk paint on the side that does not have the ruler. So once all that paint dries, I have made a mark on the inside ruler part of all of these paint sticks. And I think I marked it at like between five and a quarter and five and a half. 
Um, this is so that I will know where to place our middle tray. So for the bottom tray, I want to make sure that it is flush. The paint stick is flush to the bottom of the tray and that some of the edging on the side sticks out. And I am attaching this using Gorilla Wood Glue. And I'm going to take my paintbrush and spread that out nice and evenly. That is why I left these two sides with the raw wood so that that Gorilla Wood Glue would really adhere. Then I'm going to hold those in place with some clamps. These are just Dollar Tree clamps. So you'll have one ruler stick on each corner of the bottom tray. Now to add the second tray, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I line the bottom of that tray up with my marking I made on the ruler side. I'm going to apply the wood glue and just like the bottom tray, spread it out with my paintbrush. Go ahead and put that on all four of your ruler sticks. Then you can slide your tray down into, in between all four of those sticks. Make sure that the bottom lines up with your marking and then again, hold it in place with some clamps. Now, once those are set up, we can move on to the very top tray, which I'm going to line up the top part of our paint stick so that it does not show above the tray. You'll see in just a minute what I mean. So I don't want the top part of the paint stick to pop up above the tray. I want it to be a little bit lower than that. Again, we'll line it up on the outside edging. Hold it in place with those clamps until that wood glue completely sets before removing those clamps. Now, if you want to add some extra stability, you could always add a staple to the outside of the paint stick into the tray, but I don't plan on putting anything heavy in mine. I'm going to go over and give two coats of paint to all of the areas that I did not previously paint. Then you can decorate it however you wish. I like how this turned out. And not only could you use it as a home decor piece to decorate, it is also functional to store snacks on. And you can set this on your kitchen counter. I found this really gorgeous shaped large frame for $5 and I just loved the shape of it. I'm going to remove the hanger from the back as well as all of the staples holding the backing in and I just used a screwdriver and a regular staple remover to get all of those pieces out and then I can pop that back out. Now save the back because I'm actually going to be replacing this with some wood and I used that as a template to trace that out. This piece was very dirty. I gave it a really, really good cleaning. And I also found this smaller frame, which is has the same shape as the larger. And I just knew I wanted to make a tray out of this when I found these two pieces at the same thrift store. And that piece was $2. Again, I just removed the staples and then the hanger at the top. Now the hanger at the top did not have your typical regular screw. It just had one of those um, little pieces that you twist out. I'm not sure, like it almost looked like a bolt, but it wasn't. So I'm just going to remove that. Once I get that out, I will make sure that I give this a good thorough cleaning as well. And then I will sand down the hole where I pulled that hanger out and fill that in with a little bit of spackling or you could use wood putty or caulk or whatever you have on hand. Make sure that dries and then sand it down nice and smooth. Now I had some extra wood. It almost looks like paneling wood in my shop. So I used the backings and I traced this out. It was the perfect width, just like the backing of the pictures. Now I can reattach these new pieces into the frame. I'm gonna use E6000, and I put a very good, generous amount all the way around the beveled edge there on the inside of the frame. Place my pieces in there and let the glue set up for maybe 15 or 20 minutes on each piece. And then I will go back in with my staple gun to give it a little bit of added security and stability since I am going to be sitting items on top of this. So when I use my staple gun, I go in at a little bit of an angle to make sure that it does not come up through it, through the front of the tray that we're making. I'm actually trying to make sure that I get it inside of the groove that's actually holding the wood in. And I will do that around this entire piece as well as the smaller frame. And then if you have your staples sticking up just a little bit, you can just tap them down with a little hammer. I'm going to also be using this table leg that I had off of a coffee table. 
Now it was a little bit thicker at the top and the bottom than I wanted, so I did use my miter saw to cut those end pieces down a little bit, but I did save the block where I cut those down because I actually took one of those ends and I cut it into fours to create legs for this tiered tray. So I just cut that square into four even pieces and made sure that they were all the same height so that the tray would not wobble. I went in and used some sandpaper and sanded each of these pieces as well as that table leg now, because it is very dark. I did go in and also measure the top part of the bottom of the tray because I don't want to paint that center portion. I want to have some good adhesion when I attach these pieces together. I used E6000 and a little bit of hot glue to attach each of these legs to the bottom of the larger tray. And I'm just placing it in the corner where the backing of that backing meets the frame. And I'll do that for all four legs. Then I'm gonna set this piece to the side for just a moment. I did make sure that it was nice and level first. And I'm gonna take the smaller frame and on the back side, I'm gonna measure out where the top piece goes. I just wanna make sure that I basically know where I'm gonna place this so after I paint it, I'm not gonna paint those spots that I'm marking so I will know how to place this and everything will be nice and centered. I used Krylon Chalky Finish Paint in Classic White. After the first coat, I realized that there was a little bit more of a gap where my backing is than I wanted. I like a nice clean finish. So I used some Dollar Tree caulk and went around all of the seams on the top and after I do that, I just go in with my finger and kind of push it down and wipe it and smear it in. And then I found if you go over it with a little bit of a damp cloth, it gives it a beautiful finish. I did the exact same thing on the bottom of the tray and also on the smaller tray, I used the caulk on the top and the bottom. So this is how it looks after I have applied two more coats of paint, and now it is a time to assemble this piece. I'm going to attach this to the bottom of the smaller frame using E6000 and hot glue, and I'm gonna make sure that I keep it centered. I just like to use a tape measure to make sure I have everything all centered up before I press it down, and then I can apply this piece to the bottom of the tray using E6000 and hot glue. Again, I did make sure that I put a very generous amount of E6000 on there because I want to make sure this piece lasts and it stays together. And then now we'll make sure it's nice and centered up, pressed down, and I let mine sit overnight. Make sure that E6000 is set up before I do anything else with it. I did decide to go in and distress my piece with some Waverly Antique Wax. This is completely optional. You could leave it just as it is, but I do like to distress my pieces a little bit, not a whole lot, just a few little spots here and there. Let that wax dry up, and then it is time to decorate. You guys, I absolutely love how this tear tray turned out. It is a gorgeous. It's like one of my favorite decor pieces I have made in a long time. I started off with this scrap piece of Luan. It measures 9 and 7 eighths inches wide and then 12 and 3 eighths inches long. I am also going to be using some 1 by 3 furring strips. You can find these very inexpensively at Lowe's. They are very rough type wood. I'm going to go ahead and cut down 12 and 3 8 inch long pieces and I'm going to cut four of those. Once I have those cut down, these are going to become the bottom of our tray and I'm just going to line those up on top of the Luan to make sure that everything um, lines up and fits. And then I'm going to take the other pieces and line them up to create the outside of the tray. So I'm just holding a scrap piece at the bottom 
and the other piece at the top and then I'll move that around on the other side so I'll know where to mark it so they'll all butt up against each other. So the two longer pieces end up being 13 and 3 quarters inch long. And again, I'll have all these measurements in my description box below if you are interested in recreating this tray. So you'll have those two 13 and 3 quarter inches and then you can go in after that and measure your two shorter pieces. So I just took one of my pieces and just held it on top of the other to determine the length for that one. And then the two shorter pieces are going to sit inside of the longer pieces. I hope that makes sense, you guys. So again, those longer pieces are 13 and 3 quarter inches long. And again, this is some very rough wood, but we are going to sand it down and I like the imperfections. So the shorter pieces are going to be nine and seven eighths inches. So they're going to be the exact width of that piece of Luan that we already cut or what not cut that little scrap piece of Luan we already had. So we're just cutting it down to the same width as that. Once you have all your pieces and um, cut down, I do like to set them up and make sure everything fits before I move on to the sanding process. So again, I'm using my orbital sander and I'm going over these because they are very rough. So I do take my time and sand the entire piece because the back of a furring strip is very rough and the front is like the two rounded edges. To assemble it, I'm using some Gorilla Wood glue, and I'm going to take those four pieces that we cut down to nine and seven eighths, and I'm just going to glue those to the top of this piece of Luan. There's my little puppy. She's so cute. She came over to see what I was doing. Oh, she's so sweet. So I'll go ahead and put those four pieces down, lining them up and making sure everything is square. And once I have those in place, I did not let my glue set up long enough before I flipped it over. So if you do this, I recommend you wait and let that glue set up before you decide to flip it over. Because I am going to reinforce this with some brad nails. So I did have to line everything back up. It was perfectly fine, just a little extra step that was a little unnecessary. So I'm just going to take my brad nailer and nail each piece of wood from the bottom through the Luan. So it just attaches it and gives it some nice security. And once I am finished putting all of those in, I can flip it over and put my outside edges of this tray together. So once you have that flipped over, we're going to take the shorter end pieces and attach them first. Guys, I am so sorry. This is not in frame. I thought I had the camera up a little bit higher. Um, so sorry you can't see this. You will be able to see it um, later on. I'll be able to show you exactly where I nailed it. But all I did was put some glue on those outside pieces and then attached those shorter pieces by using the brad nailer to attach it to each piece of wood there. Again, so sorry. Then I'll go in with the longer pieces and attach those. So I do make sure that I put glue on the shorter pieces that I already had on there as well as that edge right there at the bottom. And then I'll just put my longer pieces up and attach it with the brad nailer on the two end pieces as well as the bottom of the tray. And I'll do that on the other side as well. And this is turning out so cute. I just love, I love how this tray turned out. It's very, I think it's beautiful. I hope you'll like it too. So once I get that done, this is where I had nailed it in and, and you couldn't see it in frame. So just put some nails down at the bottom in the side pieces and then on the shorter pieces, I just went along the bottom. So for this tray, I am going to be painting it with my Waverly White chalk paint. And I actually only put one coat of paint on here because I am going to distress it. Now you could leave it as is if you don't like distressing. Um, or you could paint it whatever color you like, or you could stain it. I'm going to be distressing mine again with my black chalkboard craft paint and a chip brush. And I'm just going to go over all of those edges and actually over just the whole entire piece. But I emphasize on the edges and then all of those places right there where the wood meets on the inside. And I think this is gorgeous. I know not everybody likes distressing, but I think this is so pretty.
So make sure you let that paint dry before you move on to the next step. Again, I have a decal from my Cricut Design Space, which I have a printable on my website. I'm just gonna put that right there at the bottom of the tray. And once I peel that paper back, this tray is finished. I think it's beautiful. I love how it turned out. And I would love to know what you guys think. Don't forget to go over and check out my website, which the link is in my description box below to get that free printable. And now we're gonna get started on our final project in today's video. Using two of these wood panels from Dollar Tree Plus section, they're $3 a piece and they measure 11 inches by 14 inches. I'm also using four wooden beads. I purchased my beads in a large assorted bag from Amazon, I have that linked in my Amazon store below if you are interested. I measured about an inch and a quarter off of each side and then three quarters of an inch from the front and back. And I'm going to attach these wood beads to the bottom of one of the trays using wood glue. And I measured that so I could make sure each one of them is exactly in the same spot in each corner. So everything looks cohesive when it's all put together. I'm gonna let that set for a couple of hours, make sure it's nice and sturdy and those beads aren't gonna pop off. What I love about this is that it's wood, so you could stain it whatever color you want. You could paint it. I'm gonna paint mine in white chalk paint and I'll show you why in just a minute. I'm gonna give it two coats on the entire part of the tray, including those beads, and I'm gonna paint the other tray with two coats as well. The next step is completely optional, but I am gonna go ahead and distress mine. I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color Mineral, and I'm only distressing the edges of each of the trays. So that's gonna include that outside top and bottom and then the inside edge, as well as all the way around each one of those beads. I'm gonna let that set up and dry, and then to attach our two wood panels together, I'm using a thrifted candle holder that I've had for many, many years. It's already painted and distressed, so that's why I chose to paint my panels white and distress them with the mineral color so everything would match. If you don't have a candle holder like that, you could use two of Dollar Tree's candle holders and glue those together. It's gonna give you a similar, maybe even a little bit more height than the candle holder I'm using. I used my tape measure to find the center so I could make a mark with my pencil so when I glue this down, I know exactly where it goes. I'm gonna flip that candle holder over, find the center, and trace that out so again, I know exactly where it goes when I get ready to glue it down. I am using E6000 for a nice long permanent hold, applying that to the bottom of my candle holder and then finding my marks, lining it all up. And then I'm gonna apply some E6000 to the top of the candle holder and then attach my top tray to it. I did set something with a little bit of weight on it and allow it to set up for several hours before decorating. And I love how this project turned out and I hope you guys like it too. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and today's projects. And if you haven't done so already, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow. If you have a favorite out of today's projects, please let me know in the comments down below. I always love to know which one is your favorite. Please take care and I will see you guys next time.